today we're in Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. This is a fascinating city to both travel in, but also to eat in. And we're here to eat. So this video is going to be all about the food culture here in Belgrade. And we're going to very much focus on the street food culture in this video. Serving cuisine is made up of lots of meat, bread, dairy and fresh produce. The food is absolutely phenomenal and it's reflective of the different communities that have passed through this region and left their mark. We've got a ton of local gems lined up to share with you. Let's get eating. In this Belgrade series we're delving into Serbian food culture and sharing with you some of the best food in Belgrade. We take you to a popular local spot for Chivapi, one of Serbia's national dishes, and into a 50 year old family bakery for breakfast the Serbian way. Join us for the best sausages in the city and eat at a Belgrade institution that serves up pizza like you've never seen before. You don't want to miss this video, get ready for some mouth watering food. I'm Thomas and I'm Sheena and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. As always this video is going to be about the best food here in Belgrade. So heavily researched as we always do to find you the best food. Some potatoes on the street um, to find you the best food here in, in Belgrade. And we're starting off with Borek at a very um, famous local bakery. So we're outside of the center. We've come to find this special bakery, which is very well known to do the best Borek in town. And Borek is an absolute institution here. It is the way to start your day if you're a Serbian. Borek is essentially a pie. So it's made out of a special pastry and it's filled with either meat or cheese. And it's a really traditional way to start the day or break your fast in Serbia. We're heading to this little nondescript bakery here. We've come to this particular bakery because it is a generations old family business. It's been around for a long time, a real old school place to grab Borek. So fresh Borek has just come out of the oven and the pastry is so flaky and crispy. You can either order um, cheese or meat. We went for the meat and I think it's, it's stuffed with veal and onions. Oh, it looks sensational. Looks fantastic. Voila. Yes, please. And then the traditional accompaniment with Borek is yogurt. So this is such a great little bakery. It's actually really packed out at the moment. They've got a couple of leaners on the side. Voila. So we're just gonna head over here, set up our perch and get into the Borek. So it's a very old school bakery. It's still family run. It's been around for generations. Um, and I love the atmosphere. It's just a very local feeling, very traditional. And everyone is tucking into this Borek. I love how simple Borek is. So you've got this pastry, which is called Yufka. I think um, it's similar to a phyllo in look is what I, I, I like to think of it as, but a bit sort of thicker. So you can see that beautiful crispy golden on top where it's been in the oven, but then underneath you get all these beautiful softer bits and lots of layers of pastry. And we've gone with the meat version. So it's gonna be veal. You can see the color of that meat. So just nice lightly colored veal and then those beautiful crispy bits on top and we've got the yogurt to go with it which is the traditional accompaniment as a drink now this is this is very much a drink let's I'll peel the lid right off to show you you can see how runny that is very runny yogurt so more like a drink than a than a thickened yogurt let's get into this into this Bordak, and I love how they crunch it up. So they've got a special little knife. They bring it out of the pan and then they just crunch it up into lots of little fluffy bits. <laughs> Look at this fork. Mm. Oh. Wow. Mm. That is so good. The pastry is so soft but then has the crunch on the top but the underlays are so soft and they're full of of oil so they're silky and full of flavor in your mouth and a lot of that oil has come out of the meat so it's got a real meaty flavor and the meat itself is delicious let's get a real meaty bit mm. wow mm. 
it's got a ton of onions in it so it's a bit tangy from onions it's heavily seasoned as well it's a beautiful saltiness a very good saltiness which is just bringing so much flavor out of the meat mm, a nice tangy yogurt so a nice sharp tang to the yogurt Borak is just such a great dish. It's so simple and so tasty. And I love how you can find it all over this region. So it, it's sort of, that harks from Turkey and the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire came all through this region. So everyone has their take on Borak around here. But this version is amazing. I mean, this is such a local's little bakery. I mean, they've even had to set up a little side table because the place is so full so that these guys can eat. But it's got a lovely feeling, this bakery. It's it's got a lot of history, so generations old. It's very simple, just does a bunch of different breads, and the bordak is the thing that everyone's coming in and eating. So each time a tray gets emptied, they whip out more from the kitchen. So you've got these little trays of hot bordak coming out. So it's, it's hot, it's not cooled right down. Sometimes you find big trays of bordak that have been sitting for quite a while, so the pastry can be too tough. Um, the meat's gone cold. In this case, not at all. It's all soft and light and fluffy, and man, it is so enjoyable, and I love the feeling in here. It's just a lovely, simple bakery. The photos on the wall showing the history from the family running it over so many generations. What a way to start the day. We're really loving Belgrade. The people here are very friendly and the city has a great energy about it. A very appealing grittiness, it's a little bit rough and it's a very interesting place to wander around. I think one of the reasons why I love uh, exploring the city is because of the variance in architecture. There are so many different styles of architecture so it makes it a fascinating place to explore. We're heading to our next spot and we're going to be eating a thing which you have to eat when you're here in Belgrade or in Serbia. It's a quintessential Serbian dish. Next up we're going to have another one of the must eats when you're here in Belgrade and that is Javapi. Now this again is heavily researched where we're going to eat to find the best version possible of Javapi and now this is a really neat dish often described as little meat fingers which I think is great but the restaurant is yeah just here let's head on in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've ordered up a feast. We're here to eat chivapi. So chivapi is a really uh, popular food here in Serbia. It's the thing that we've probably eaten the most of since arriving in Belgrade. The dish is made up of little minced meat fingers. So this restaurant serves it with veal, sometimes the mixture of different meats, and it's served in a flatbread, about 10 to a flatbread, and we've ordered some traditional accompaniments to go with it, and beers to wash it all down. Good, ho ho ho. Our chivapi has arrived and check out how good this platter looks. So these are the chivapi. They're made out of veal and they're cooked over charcoal and they're often described as minced meat fingers. They're essentially meatballs, like long meatballs. And they always come with this flatbread here. So very warm, toasty flatbread. There's also, let me show you, underneath the chivapi, some fresh diced onion. There's some pickled cabbage on the side. And we ordered it with some traditional accompaniments. So this here is Iva. It's a sauce or a relish made out of uh, bell peppers. And then this here is Kaimak, which is clotted cream. And then the waitress also bought us some mustard because she said that goes really well with the chivapi. I'm gonna load up this flatbread with chivapi. So stuff some of those uh, veal meat fingers inside, grab a whole lot of this red, uh, raw onion. The onion really adds a freshness and a tanginess to it. And I reckon this pickled cabbage will do the same. Look at that. And now I'm gonna grab some of this clotted cream. So the Kai Mark, you can see how thick it is. So just a huge dollop of that on there. And let's chuck some of this Iva on as well. So this is a very traditional Serbian um, accompaniment or sauce to go with the chivapi. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's a behemoth of a sandwich. All right. Mmm. Whoa. 
that is really good. The chivapi are so juicy. So there's a really good mix of uh, meat and fat in there. You can really taste the smokiness from the grill. And that flatbread is so soft, but still a little bit crispy from uh, being over that grill as well. I'm loving the kaimak and the Iva. They add a real creaminess and kick to the meat. Mmm. 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 Whoa, this is good. We came to this particular restaurant because I'd read that a lot of locals really rate this spot and I can see why. The chivapi is excellent. It is so juicy. And I really love the freshness of the raw onion and the pickled cabbage is a slightly tangy so it um, cuts through the richness of the meat. This is amazing. I just want to show you guys how juicy this chivapi is. So you can see in there, you can see all the juiciness coming out of the meat. And it's a little bit fatty, but it doesn't have that cloying, fatty flavor. It is just sensational. Holy moly, this is good. Now, the lady said that having it with mustard was great as well. So let's get a, a big blob of mustard and just chuck it right on in the middle there. All right, and go for this bite. Look at that. So there's the kaimak, the clotted cream, the uh, red pepper relish, and then the mustard. Mmm. Mmm. I can see why she said to have it with mustard. It's so good. And then we've got the beer to chase it down with. And then that bitter beer. What I'm loving about this dish is the variance in textures. So you've got this really soft bread, the juicy meat, crunchy onions and cabbage, and the silky smooth uh, red pepper relish, and then that creamy creamy clotted cream it just all works and it's so satisfying to eat and i've really noticed that the produce here in serbia is of a really high quality uh, the food is often prepared super simply but it doesn't need much playing around with because the quality of the ingredients is so high and you can really taste the quality oh this is such a good meal Belgrade is such an interesting city with so much interesting history. So we're making our way through Belgrade Fort now, which has been here a very long time. I mean, this history of people being in Belgrade, the area of Belgrade for 20 to 50,000 years, which is a crazy long time. The fort as it is now and what we're seeing now uh, was built around 1715 or 1720 in that sort of period. So it's still very old as it stands. And the entire population of Belgrade used to live within the grounds of this fort which is super interesting but it's a city that is just so fascinating to be in I mean as a child and a teenager I remember seeing Belgrade on the news and it felt so far away so it's great to be here now and ex experiencing it for ourselves and getting to experience it through its food and finding out its culture and about its people via its food I'm absolutely loving it so we're going to now explore the fort for a little bit before we head off for our next meal Serbians love their meat and our next spot is a place, a little fast food spot that uh, does really great sausages we hear. They uh, make all of their sausages in-house and locals have told us that this is the best place to get Serbian sausages. We've come into this little shop and the smell of the sausages on the grill, actually look here, you can see all of the sausages on the grill there, they're huge, really long, whole range of meats I think, I think I can see chicken and pork on there, oh, I can't wait to order. So you can customise your hot dog, they've got a whole range of sauces, there was mustard, sour cream, the guy said mustard was the best, also added some uh, diced raw onion to go with it, oh that looks amazing, voila! <laughs> This is one heck of a good looking hot dog. So the kobasitsa or the sausage, we just went for the classic. We said to them in there, what's, what's your most classic? What is the one that, that we should get? And they said this one, and they said to go with um, mustard. Definitely mustard only. So look at it. Wow, it's huge. Oh man, so look at that sausage. And I love this bun, it's so soft. 
Um, you can see it's nice and aerated. It's kind of like a, almost a bap sort of feel to it. And he took the bun and he put it on top of all the sausages that are on the grill and there's a lot of sausages on that grill. So the smell in the shop is unreal. But he, he rolled the bun over the sausages. So picked up all that fat that was coming out of them, got it all onto the interior of that bun, then stuck the giant sausage on there and we just went with a whole lot of mustard, so covered in mustard. You can see how much mustard there is on there. And some fresh onions, so some pretty, pretty thickly diced bits of fresh onion. I'm going for this end where the sausage is sticking right out the end. Oh man, mmm. Mmm, oh that is very good. The texture of the sausage is amazing. So nice and soft, but it's got some good bits of fat in there. So a lot of flavor coming from that. And this is an interesting sausage because it's both beef and pork. So combination of both meats. So you've got different um, tastes coming through there. And the this, um, herbs and spices in there, it's got some good spices. It's got a little kick of chili. Oh, there's flavor. Mmm. 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 The flavor is amazing. The bun and the mustard are amazing. But the thing that really jumps out is the texture of the sausage. I love how that meat has been handled. And they make all the sausages in house. So it's one of the reasons that this place is so well known for its hot dogs because of the, the homemade sausages. I love also this dining style. So sitting outside on the footpath, uh, we've seen this quite a lot in Belgrade. So little places, often little shops or little windows with street food or a little seating area right on the street. It's a really neat feeling. And I love how even in winter time while we're here, these places are still out on the street. So you can sit having street food. And I love this sausage and something really interesting actually. So this is a pork and beef sausage. Something really interesting we were reading about in our research was pork here in Serbia. So there's a legend on pork being used here that when the Ottoman Empire came and took over this region in 1521, they're saying that pork was used, started to be put into things as a little bit of a revolt against what was happening could be a total legend, but I think it's a pretty cool story. And I love this beef and pork combination sausage. It's a great, great combo. And it's so well spiced and seasoned, this um, sausage. This is very good. And that mustard's great. And I've eaten down a little bit further and had some with the, got some onions. And those super crispy, super crunchy, fresh onions go very well with it. We always like to show you the food that the locals are eating in these videos and often that is the traditional food of the country that we're traveling in but I also think it's fun to share with you the sort of quirkier foods that are cult classics or have become a bit of uh, institutions in the cities and this next food that we're going to eat is exactly that it's uh, actually from this little shop here it's a tiny little window and there's a bit of a line forming so let's go and join it so we're standing in line for a slice of pizza, but it's not like any pizza I've ever seen before. It's a pizza with salad dressing over the top of it, and it's a very popular spot. Hi, how are you? Kakosi? Good. Can I please have one slice with um, beef salad? Voila. So this is just this tiny little window and the smells coming from it are amazing. I can see, oh, Fala looks so good. Um, I can see the guys making the pizza out the back there. So the pizza's coming out real fresh and then they've got about uh, eight different salads that you can choose from. <laughs> How crazy is this slice of pizza? Uh, so this place is a Belgrade institution and the line is just growing and growing. Actually a local just came up to us and said the line at uh, night time, so in the early hours, I believe it's open till like, bye, I believe it's open till really late at night, um, just stretches around the block and they are just churning out these slices of pizza topped with this salad dressing. So what it is, is just a, I think it's a ham, mushroom and cheese pizza and then 
all of the salad dressing has just been slathered over the top. So we got the beef one because I heard that that was the, the salad dressing to get. But they had all sorts of different ones. I saw tuna, chicken, I think there were sort of veggie spreads. And I think perhaps it's a, a like a mayonnaise based salad dressing. This is wild. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Whoa. This is crazy and it is crazy good. So I'm not going to pretend that the pizza is the best pizza I've ever eaten because it's not. It's very basic but with the salad dressing it is it like transforms it. So the, the salad dressing is very creamy, slightly tangy, and um, you can see the little bits of beef on there. Uh, so it's got like a, a savory flavor. This is wild. I can see why this spot would be very busy at night. Because after a big night of drinking, and the, the people in Belgrade love to party, there are clubs and bars like all along the river. This is what you'd want to be eating. It is really crazy, but very good. This sure is something super unusual. I've never seen anything like this before. That was so weird. <laughs> oh, I love it when something you're so used to is so different wow it's it's very tangy that that salad dressing basically a, a mayonnaise taste to it very creamy wow that is unusual i love how there's such a big line and i can see why it's it's very tasty very unique super unusual and sums up this day of street food really well so had all these great street foods here in Belgrade. Tomorrow we're gonna to film a video with the much more traditional Serbian foods that you can find here in Belgrade. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit that like button or thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Man, I have had a good day filming this one.